there are 1.8 billion of us, more of us now than ever before. We are young people between the ages of 10 and 24, and soon we will become tomorrow's working adults. The opportunities we have today will shape our country's futures. How can we, history's largest generation of young people, contribute to our nation's economies? The potential lies in what's called a demographic dividend. It's the faster economic growth that can happen when a country's birth rate decreases and changes the age structure of the population. With fewer births each year, there will eventually be more working age people than young children and elderly. This means each working age adult can support fewer dependents and invest more in the future of their families. Fertility rates can decline when men and women have more access to contraception and choose to have fewer children. This results in smaller, healthier and more financially stable families. But the economic growth from a demographic dividend is not automatic. Along with population changes, we need the right investments in health, education, jobs, and governance. First, young people must have access to quality sexual and reproductive health care and accurate information. Delaying marriage and pregnancy lets us complete more education and empowers more women to join the workforce. There are too many health professionals who judge and shame young people for asking for contraception or wanting to get tested for HIV. We need safe spaces. Improving overall health care can ensure we are healthy and fit to drive the economy. Boosting children's health and nutrition leads to more income in our adulthood, increasing household wages by as much as 20%. In the rural areas, roads are so bad, people cannot access health care, and if they are able to, the facilities are missing so many supplies. Education is also important. With higher levels of quality education, we will be prepared to move into formal sector jobs and earn higher wages. In Indonesia, the government needs to focus on the quality of education. We should not just be memorizing things, but getting good life skills that will help us professionally. For the economy, expanding job growth is critical for us as we enter the workforce. Higher earning jobs need to be available in non-agricultural sectors such as manufacturing and knowledge-based industries like banking or technology. The government should increase access to interest-free loans and good business management trainings along with the slums so their businesses are sustainable. To support good governance, we should have the opportunity to shape the policies that impact our lives. It is time to make a designated space for us at the table and make it meaningful. To engage with decision makers and have our voices heard and to hold policymakers accountable to their commitments. With youth-friendly access to contraception and better health, education, jobs, and governance, we can achieve a demographic dividend and create a future where people and nations reach their full potential. Because we are young and